here's another talking video, so if you don't like talking videos, um, be forewarned. I was going to do the kind of renovation update and stop-by-stop -stop demo for this um, last Mason and Highland I did. You can see it's, um, it's a list organ. It was made in 1893. It's got a... Um, very low style that is height wise it is not a tall cabinet it's a very, very compact kind of cabinet <clears throat> pardon me um, so I'll also review like what's a list organ so I'll start out with what Mason and Hamlin themselves said here's the most identifying factor uh, that a list organ is um, you can see there's some sound grills underneath the action and that's where the reeds live for this stop here which is the 16 foot contrabasso and corno reeds they reside underneath the 8 foot melodia reeds reside behind the main front grill and then behind them on the inside is the uh, 4 foot uh, viola piccolo rank. Um, it has an aeolian harp stop. That's in a separate little elevated chest that was because this uh, the aeolian harp was retrofitted to this organ after it was initially designed. It was built for it was it was uh, constructed and sold for a number of years that were in it did not have the aeolian harp. Um, so they found a way to put it in, uh, you know, after the fact where they didn't have to go back and change their, their design at all. So that was quite clever. It has another eight-foot stop in the treble that's called Seraphone, and that's located in its own chest at the back of the action, and it speaks out the, um, the rear sound grills. And so... What I'll do now is just uh, demonstrate some of the, I'll demonstrate the stops sort of one by one and you can hear the, the different sound qualities that they have. So the main stop that you, know, you use most commonly is that the, the middle C tone is actually at middle C on the keyboard and that's the English horn melodia rank regular eight-foot sound and it's a really good it's it's the roundest sounding uh, set of reeds on the organ they're they're just a, a, a rich round full sound and not reedy and it goes from just that it's since this is a C scale keyboard this is a normal eight-foot C as they call it it's the first note of the eight-foot set so and it ends at the, the top. So there's, that's the standard one. The octave, an octave higher that is, they call that uh, viola and piccolo on this. It's a four foot stop. So at middle C, it's an octave higher. Um, and it's a it's a it's a little brighter, I guess. I guess it's about the same as the melodia. It's about the same. It's just an octave higher. Um, and the third stop is the, the, there's the 16 foot rank, and so that goes the middle C it sounds an octave lower than normal. So there's the eight foot bottom C of an eight foot set. And there's the 16 foot C, so there's a 16 foot rank. And these also, so the 8 foot ones speak out the front, the 16 foot ones speak out the front, the 4 foot one speaks out the back, and it also is allowed to come up, the sound comes up through the Vox Humana fan, which is mounted in such a way that any sound that's coming out of that the flute set has to go right through those blades. So the tremulant is very deep on the 4 foot set. Um, so, I'll just go through the bass side then. 
it, it, to finish off what stops it has. It has a, a muted stop for the forefoot. It's called viola dolce. And it's kind of unique that you move the, the swell lever and the, the reeds don't get any louder. They're not affected by using the swell. So they're always, it's always a muted sound. And that's really good because normally the, the forefoot, the forefoot is a pretty prominent sound anyway. So when you, when you draw the dolce effect, you're closing the swell over it. And it's, 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 it's very nice to be able to have the forefoot be a little less prominent. When, when, when you don't want that whole singing forefoot sound. And it also has a, um, a, a dolce set up for the eight foot set. And that is, so there's the eight foot set at full volume. And then there it is muted. So it's, it's, that's, that's also a good effect. And there, um, it remains in pretty good tune, even with the... It remains in pretty good tune with that thing. Uh, the last stop on the bass, except well, it's a bass, but I'll get to that in a second. There's the Aeolian, which I mentioned. It has its own little um, separate reed chest. You can hear how that sounds. It's got a, a built-in vibrato. It's like a string sound. So there's two reeds for each note, and they're tuned slightly to different pitches. One is flatter and one is sharper. So when they're when they sing together they give a beat. And the beat is calculated to be just about as fast as the and the problem is I have to adjust the box humana to spin a little bit that slower because that really should be seamless, that the Vox Humana should be spinning as fast to get the same beat so that you get a um, continuity up the keyboard. That, that's always nice. This one, I, uh, this Vox Humana wasn't spinning at all. It was, I guess it had a lot of old oil on it or something because it wouldn't spin. So I put a couple drops of oil on it and started it spinning and now it's uh, polished the uh, metal uh, axle and so it just by spinning and now it's like really spinning fast so I have to figure out something that's going to gum it up a little bit only you know only can, if I have to I'll put a little bit um, larger piece of felt in the um, venturi hole that gets the turbine to spin okay so anyway then there's the sub bass so the sub bass sub basses are 99 percent of the time from C to C so and this is no different It's a, it's an idea to give you like the simulation in a lim as limited a way as is possible on just a, a, a organ that only has one keyboard and no foot pedals. Um, to, you can sort of have the simulation of uh, organ pedal sound. So it's a 16 foot pitch and it's of a much larger scale of reed than, than the manual 16 and it's like a pedal 16 scale. Of course, I've tuned all of these, and um, this was this organ came from the factory in 1893 at A435, and that's about exactly where most of it was. That's 15 cents flat of 15 hundredths of a semitone flat of the standard 440 pitch, and so I tuned it to 440, and a lot of it was at 15 cents sharp when I was checking all the pitches, but some reads, unfortunately, were something like 30, 35 cents flat 
which meant that they were about 20 cents flatter than even if the organ was just to be tuned to itself. And so that's why this one sounded so, so really, really hideous um, when I got it put back together and playing. It's just, it was just some of the uh, reads, about, I don't know, 20%, 30% of them were like wildly off pitch. Um, so to finish off the treble side of it, there's a Melodia Dolce. That's that muted eight foot as opposed to the full volume. And as in other Mason and Hamlins, the Dolce is actually add an additive stop, which means you can add it to the principal stop and get a, a third tone quality. So there's the stop by itself. There's adding the dolce. It brightens it and turns it into turns it into more of a string sound actually. So the, the dolce by itself again is pretty much not subject to the, the use of the um, swell pedal, swell, the swell lever, as the main stop is. Um, and like I said, there's the four foot stop. There's a, a fourth rank of reeds in the treble side, and that's the seraphone stop. And that's another eight foot set, but it's much brighter than the melodious set. So it's not, it's not as round, it's more penetrating. <laughs> But they set the, uh, they set, uh, I've talked about this before in other videos, but I'll repeat myself, because I love hearing myself talk. Um, the seraphone is set up on list organs to give two qualities of tone, as they put it. There's the stop with the swells closed. Then with the swell open. Swell closed. Compared to the melodia, the round melodia and the keener seraphone, and then both of them together. So it adds it, it immediately adds some brightness to the melodia, even though the melodia is a bit more powerful and rounder, and right up front where it's you can as at least as the, the, the musician you can hear it quite clearly. The seraphone's coming from inside. There's also, it's, it's impossible to see because it's so dark under here, but under this lid, there's another set of um, sound grills here, and then on the back of the case, there's fretwork that has sound grills um, to let the sound out. So there's the seraphone. Now, there's a, the next stop is the combination stop called Voz Celeste. And that combines the melodia and the seraphone and the melodia dolce all at once. So you're opening three different stop flaps over two sets of reeds. Because that's the, the melodia has a second stop flap on the top of the reed cells. So when you use the melodia dolce, you're opening the roof of each, of each reed cell up with an, a different stop. Instead of opening the, the stop that's in front of the reeds, you're opening one that's up on the ceiling of the reed cells. So that gives the dolce, and it, it limits the amount of air that can come in. But the interesting effect they noticed was when you open both of those mutes over the reeds, they're brighter, but they're also a little bit sharp. So it, it, giving them more air from two directions causes the pitch to go up just enough so that when you combine it with another unison stop because these are these are tuned exactly in unison so there's no warble there's no beat but on the melodia and the seraphone but sharpening the melodia by adding the third the, the second mute of it by adding the air from a different direction uh, makes them sharp so then you get a celeste
you sort of have second Celeste there just by drawing those two. And actually on some other models of Mason and Hanlon, when you pull the Vox, Vox Celeste knob, you're only drawing the Seraphon and the Melodia Dolce. They, they chose to do it that way just so that you could get even more sound out of it later by doing that. So if you're playing full organ on this, when you bring full organ on, full organ is very powerful, but it doesn't bring on the Celeste. So, Celeste on, you get even a slightly brighter sound. So, there's the stops on this. Let me do the, um, see if I can slow. I had a pipe top list organ once, a long time ago, it sold a few years ago. And it was really nice because for some reason, I don't know, I didn't do this intentionally, but somehow it was really easy to, vi to vary the speed of the Vox Humana just by slightly closing the, the draw knob. So you could have it spin really fast and just go wah, 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 wah. Or you could spin it slow and it would just go wow, 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 like a chorale setting on a Leslie. And it was, um, it was great. I, I would love it if I could get this to do that. This doesn't seem to want to do that. I think it was just the, the particular leather flap over the, the Vox Humana. But there's the tremolo. It's really nice. It affects the seraphone too. The problem with the Vox Humana is they really need to spin at the right speed because if they're spinning so fast, then the that the variation in that the perceived well the Doppler effect I guess you'd have to call it 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 just becomes a blur. You can't really hear it. You know there's some kind of distortion going on, but it, it's not a nice. It's not a nice vibrato, it's just going brrrr. So the thing I like about the lists is, is that the reeds are bigger, um, they're wider, so the actual reed board, the actual reed cells in this go out beyond where the keyboard is. So you actually have reeds out here and here. Just because they're so wide, they don't fit right under the key. So they use the fan board or spreader board or whatever, whatever you'd like to call it, a different kind of mechanism to couple where the key, where the key action is in it. So the, 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 the boards fan out so that actually when you press the key here, it's actually opening the valve down here. And then it gets further afield as it goes. So this, this key is actually opening a valve that's over here. And that's by the grace of that fanned out board of 61, very carefully made and you know regulatable hinged levers that uh, they're kind of brilliantly engineered to not add, not add any kind of friction at all to the, to the action of this thing. So this was able to be, it plays with no more effort than uh, any normal organ, even though it has so much more mechanism in play, because they were really, really clever about uh, doing all this. Back in those days, they regarded this as probably, and you know, pound for pound or per square foot, this is really the ideal reed organ in terms of having a large amount of really nice round tone with or without tremolo. So that's that's the eight and the, uh, that's the sixteen and the four together.